Hello, everyone. So take a look at this integral. Can you think of an obvious way to solve for this integral? If you can, good job. Because when I first saw this integral, it took me a while to figure out the path to solving it. This is known as a Gaussian integral, and the expression inside e to the negative x squared is a Gaussian. And you can expect to encounter the Gaussian function in many fields, such as signal processing. You can expect to see this integral in quantum mechanics. And so it would do you well to know how to go about approaching this integral. And so in this video, I want to cover the fancy trick that you can use to solving this. So let's get started. It won't take long. So the first step we're going to do in solving this integral is we're going to take this expression and multiply it by itself, essentially squaring it. And it will become clear why we're doing this step later on. Now that we have the expression multiplied by itself, we're going to do something very interesting, and here's the trick. Now they are the same expression, but these two expressions are still independent of each other. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these expressions, and we're going to change the variable from x to y. Notice that we haven't broken any rules. It doesn't matter what the variable is. This expression will still equal this expression, even though I've replaced the variable name with y. But now that we have this expression here, we can actually multiply them together while keeping variable x and variable y. What we can do is we can actually take this integral and bring it out and take the inner expressions and multiply them with each other. So let's do that. And then of course there's dx and dy. So looking at this expression, what would the next step be? If you take a look at the exponent of this exponential, we see here we have negative x squared minus y squared. And when you see this, one thing that might come to mind is the concept of polar coordinates. So one thing we could try is instead of integrating across a Cartesian coordinate system, we can integrate it across a polar coordinate system. So that's the second trick here in solving for this expression. So in Cartesian coordinates, we are dealing with x and y. Whereas in polar coordinates, we are dealing with r for radius, and theta for angle. So, if I have a Cartesian coordinate system, so if I'm integrating across a Cartesian coordinate system for a particular expression, each of the mesh cells that I'm integrating across would look something like this. It would simply be tiny squares, where the width of each square is dx, and the height of each square is dy. Make sense? If I'm working with a Cartesian coordinate system and I'm converting it to a polar coordinate system, you can see that our mesh cell would change slightly. So let's draw what a polar coordinate system would look like. So whereas in our Cartesian coordinate system, each mesh cell looks like a square. In our polar coordinate system, you can think of each cell as me taking a slice of a pie and then taking a sliver of that slice. So let me draw it out just to be a little more clear. So this would be the slice of my pie. This slice will be an angle, d theta. And I will take a sliver of that slice. So this would be what my cell looks like in the polar coordinate system. This uh, dimension here would be dr for radius. 
Assuming that d theta is very small, we can use small angle approximation, which would mean that we can approximate this cell here as almost a square. And so what would this dimension be for this cell in the poor coordinate system? Well, it would simply be r, which is the distance the cell is away from the origin, r multiplied by d theta. So this dimension here is r d theta. So you can imagine you have many of these mesh cells. They will simply be replicated all the way around in a circle. So this is an example of a cell in the polar coordinate system. So in my Cartesian coordinate system, the area of one of my cells would be dx dy. Whereas in my polar coordinate system, the area of each of my cells would be dr times r d theta. So if I were to integrate across the entire Cartesian space with dx dy, I would also need to substitute each cell with polar coordinates r dr d theta if I were to integrate across the entire 2D space. And so if we wanted to go into polar coordinates, we would substitute dx dy for the polar coordinates, and we would also substitute r squared, and we would also substitute r squared equals to x squared plus y squared. Let's do the polar coordinate substitution. Because I'm integrating from x to negative infinity to infinity and y negative infinity to infinity, I can make the necessary substitutions for r and theta in this expression. r will be integrated from 0 to infinity because it's radius, and theta will be integrated from 0 to 2 pi for one revolution. So. I erased that just to make it cleaner. So this is actually the expression that we are solving for. We will see that we can now do an integration by substitution, where we can substitute u equals to r squared which means that with a substitution, du will equal to 2r dr. And so let's crank the rest out. I'm going to erase the pictures uh, just to do the rest of the math. By the way, we can ignore theta for now and just focus on the integral on the inside with r. And that's how we're going to do the substitution. So looking at this integral, it looks pretty easy, right? Just a simple exponential here. So, And we're almost there. So this integral here inside is 1 half, which means that we're integrating across a constant from theta equals 0 to 2 pi, which gives us pi, okay? But wait, we just solved for our original expression squared, which means that this original integral is simply the square root of the answer we got here, square root of pi. Voila, there's your answer. The Gaussian integral is equal to square root of pi. And you will likely encounter this again with different scaling factors inside, but you can take care of that easily. So here we have it, the solution, and it took two fancy tricks to get there. The first was to take the original problem 
and square it instead and find the solution to that. And the second trick was going from the Cartesian coordinate system into polar coordinate system. It's not terribly difficult, but it did require a little bit of thought. And so we have square root of pi. It's not quite obvious that you'll get this answer by looking at this expression. So hope you enjoy and have a great week.